guys, Digi Friends. Uh, it's Jesse again at Miss Laid Pages, and I'm so excited to talk to you all. Um, there are a lot more of you now, which is so exciting. I'm so thankful to have so many people checking me out and uh, checking in on these videos. Um, and I did do that Diamond Painting Live last Saturday, and it was um, it was super fun. I was so excited. Um, I had done a very much smaller live with um, Melissa, Marissa McCartney and Rachel Ray and a couple other folks who, um, who helped me out testing out my equipment and everything. And that was just five of us and that was fun, but oh my gosh, to have so many people in the room and have so many conversations going on. And, um, and I was really touched that so many people were impressed by how I put down my diamonds. <laughs> I'm just really kind of particular with squares and, uh, and I had a couple people, um, you know, just kind of compliment me on how, um, how perfectly laid they were. So that was kind of exciting. So that was really fun. I'm actually thinking about doing um, more uh, a regular live um, maybe on Wednesday evenings um, I'm not sure if any of y'all have time um, or anything like that but um, I will let you know when I start scheduling those or you'll see them if you hit that little bell uh, to be notified when I um, when I post new things so uh, probably Wednesday evenings Eastern maybe seven ish something like that I know a lot of people already do lives on the weekends and I don't really want to um, to infringe on anybody else's live time, but um, definitely it's super fun. Um, it's like chatting with a bunch of friends and um, and it actually gets me to focus on my diamond painting, which I haven't done a lot of because all of my time is taken up by cross stitch, um, which is totally fine because I love cross stitch, but, <laughs> but I also want to do my diamond painting. So I think maybe dedicating an hour or two a week um, to, to diamond painting would be kind of fun. So anyway, so that was last week. Um, I don't know if um, all of you watching this tuned in since uh, probably you are my stitchy friends uh, versus my diamond painting friends, but regardless, happy to have you either place. Um, and I'm happy to have so many of you here. I'm very, very excited. And I'm actually gonna do, um, I know I've mentioned it a couple times, but I am gonna do some thing, I, I will do some thank you gifts later. Um, I will mention that a little bit later in the video and uh, how you can get in on that. So not really doing a contest, but I do want to give some thank you gifts and welcome gifts and that kind of stuff. So talk about that later. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let's talk about January. So it's only been, um, it's been about a week and a half, I guess, almost two weeks uh, since my last floss tube. I've done, I made a lot of progress on some things, not a lot of progress on other things. I did kind of want to do a um, 24 hours of cross stitch rundown, so I don't know. I mean, if you want to pause the video and, and read this, you can see what everything is. Um, this was the acrostic from January for 24 hours of cross stitch. Uh, Jen Lee does that on Facebook. Uh, she has a blog, I believe, as well, and she also has a YouTube. Check her out. She has quirks and stitches on here on YouTube. So um, as far as things I accomplished on Ready, Set, X's, um, I did actually, I, I accomplished my um, 120 stitches on my really, really old whip. Um, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, so the Sun and the Moon kit, I actually did uh, 300, no, 400 stitches. Um, so I, I way overshot that goal, so that's pretty awesome. Um, I did not stitch on my Macintosh Rose SAL at all. So that one is a fail. Um, I didn't finish any of my January patterns for my SALs. So let's not call it a fail, but that's a miss. I missed all of those. Um, and that's most of my list for Ready, Set, X's was finish January, finish January, finish January. So um, I missed all of those. Um, and I have not started my surprise stitching project that I'm gonna do with some other folks. So I missed on that as well. But I do believe that I cross stitched at least 24 hours in January. I'm gonna to have to go back and actually count. Um, but since I have an average of two to three hours every time I sit down and I'm stitching more days than I'm not stitching, I most likely got 24 hours. I know that I got about eight hours of stitching in last weekend for the, uh, the actual 24 hours of cross stitch marathon. So. So I, I hit some of the, I hit some of my marks. I hit, I missed some of my marks, but you know, we'll reset and go to February. I haven't decided what my goals are going to be for February yet. Um, I need to, I'm still in the process of figuring out how I want my planner set up. This three ring binder, the giant three ring binder is not working for me. I can't carry it back to back and forth with me to work easily. And really my lunchtime is when I have a few minutes to sit down and do that because, you know, I spend 30 minutes eating with a friend and then I have 30 minutes to do nothing. And usually I end up wasting it looking at Facebook or something like that. Um, so it's not enough time to really get any stitching in, but it's also too much time to just sit there and stare at the wall. So I would really like to be doing something semi-productive. Um, so I'm actually working on getting the whole planner printed on like, um, 
I forget what the the official term is, but eight and a half by five and a half sheets so that I can do it in like a half, um, either a half three ring binder um, or one of those disc bound um, planners. So I'm working on that hoping to get that set up. Obviously not before February because I'm filming this on February 1st. So, <laughs> so it'll happen soon though. Um, so I'll get organized. Um, the other thing that's really uh, kind of keeping me motivated, keeping me organized, is I'm participating in the School of Magical Stitches in Literature. Uh, last year they did a Harry Potter theme, and I'm super sad that I missed out on that because I love the Harry Potter books. I would have loved an excuse to stay on top of rereading them or re-listening to them and all the Harry Potter themed stuff, so I'm super sad that I missed out on that. But um, it's still fun this year. They're doing a Disney theme. I may have mentioned this before. I can't remember. Um, they're doing a theme uh, based on the Disney parks. Um, and so the books this year are uh, the Kingdom Keepers and the Villain series uh, for Disney. Um, not really my bag. I did listen to the first of the Kingdom Keepers books and they're young adult, I guess, which is not not a problem. Um, I have loved a lot of young adult series, uh, Harry Potter included, um, though I was kind of a young adult when I was reading it. But even so, you know, a young adult series can be good for all ages. These books just didn't really thrill me. Um, I Part of it is I don't find the Magical Kingdom all that magical. Uh, for me, it's too commercialized. And while I can appreciate certain Disney products, Baby Yoda, uh, <laughs> or The Child, uh, regardless, uh, Mandalorian was pretty awesome. Um, and there's some other Disney properties that, you know, that I'm definitely interested in. But I'm just not one of those people that's crazy, you know, gangbusters over Disney. And so listening to a book that's basically just a rundown of, you know, kids going to this park and that park and the other park um, on some magical, mystical tour, not tour, but a quest to, to save the Disney parks. Just, it just wasn't, it didn't throw me. Fortunately, they're going to be doing, um, my cats are running around like crazy. <laughs> Momo has a sock. Momo has a sock. Momo has given Momo a sock. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> Harry Potter digression. Anyway, so um, they're doing alternate reading assignments as well. So I get to this month, um, instead of the first villains book, I'm going to be reading Mirror Mirror by uh, Gregory Maguire. And when I say reading, I actually mean listening. I am, I no longer have the ability to sit down and read a book, not because I can't physically read the book, but because um, I have so many other things that I want to do and so little time to do them in that I, I don't have the time to sit down and read. And I'm a super slow reader to boot, so that doesn't help. Um, so I'm listening to books now, um, which is awesome. I have a, a subscription to Audible, so I can get all those books in um, in Audible format, uh, audio format, and so that's how I'm that's how I'm reading books these days. And I've already gotten through three so far in January, so that's pretty awesome. Um, two of them were pretty short. I mean, Kingdom Keepers was only six hours. And then I also listen to um, Follow Me to Ground, uh, which is a really interesting one. If you follow Jenny Lawson, the bloggers. Um, she is opening a bookstore uh, and she has started this uh, this book club. Uh, what is it? The, the, I can't remember what it's called. You know how she is. She's got these like long awesome names for things and it's the Strangelings Foundlings book club for Strangelings or something. I can't remember. Regardless, um, I haven't joined the book club because she's not doing an audio version of it, but she has this book club and I am following along and reading along and um, January's book was Follow Me to Ground, which was a really interesting listen. Um, and I think I definitely preferred to listen to it versus having read it, but it was only four hours long. It's a pretty short book. And, um, but it was, it was surreal, um, and the language was really beautiful and poetic, um, so that was really cool. Um, I definitely enjoyed having the recommendation. I never would have found that book on my own, um, so being exposed to new and different, um, types of material I think is really great. Um, and that's definitely something that I enjoyed and it made me think, but it's not something I... I would have thought to look for, let alone actually found all by myself. So I'll be following her book club as well. I'll keep you updated with that since I'm doing Magical Stitches as well. So yeah, in addition to the reading part of Magical Stitches, um, they have actual stitching goals. Um, you know, different little challenges to meet each week, each month. 
um, and then year-long challenges and that kind of stuff. I went on a long digression to get here, so <laughs> too long, didn't read. The point is that they have weekly challenges for stitching. Um, and so uh, with the weekly challenges, along with the 24 hours of cross stitch, I've really kind of been able to focus and hone in and go, okay, I'm gonna work on this piece for this many stitches and this piece for this many stitches. I'm still having trouble with the counting the stitches thing. It's not something that comes naturally to me. And most of my patterns apparently aren't readable in um, Pattern Keeper, which would be super easy because then you just kind of like mark off the ones that you've done and it tells you how many stitches, but I ain't got it that easy. So um, yeah, so uh, keeping everything together that way and um, yeah. <laughs> I may need to edit this part out. We'll see how much editing I want to do because I totally lost my train of thought. Anyway, so that's how I'm keeping on task with things. And I think I've gotten more stitches in this month because of that. It's it's just kind of helping me focus in. Um, I'm not gotten as, as many stitches in on some of the things that I would like to have gotten stitches in on just because the challenges you kind of have to you can certainly work almost any whip you have into the challenge, but the challenges don't always let you work on all the whips you want to. So we'll see. And then outside of the challenges, I don't know that I have a whole lot of time to keep up with things. So we'll just, but I did go to San Antonio this month, um, you know, this past month, and I think there's less going on in February. Hopefully there is another long weekend. It's good to work for the government. Um, yeah, so there's another long weekend in February, so hopefully I'll get some more stitching done. So anyway, let me show you some actual cross stitching because at this point, 11 minutes in, you might be interested in seeing some cross stitch stuff, huh? <laughs> so um, I forgot to show this last time. While I was in San Antonio, um, I didn't take my, excuse me, my bigger whips because of travel reasons and things like that. But I did take my smaller whips, and so primarily I worked on this piece. This is the um, blah 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 blah. This is the Stitch On Me Winter Twenty Nine SAL. It is a bunch of snowflakes in a circle, um, and I don't say that to be flip. It's just that's what it is. <laughs> and uh, I think I'm I think I'm at twenty one or so of twenty seven maybe 22 of 27. Um, so I got, um, I got a good bit because I think I had, I think I had this area, uh, dyslexia, this camera, I swear people, okay. When I film this on my phone, it's so much easier because my hand moves where I expect it to move. Anyway, so this side on over here, I had most of that done and then all of these bits on this side are what I did in San Antonio. And actually on camera, it looks much more interesting to me than it does looking at it in person. It's kind of funny. So when I look at it in person, it's kind of boring to me, but then I see it in the camera and I'm like, oh, that actually is kind of interesting. So um, it's been slow going because I just don't, I don't find it that interesting. It's just, it's just snowflakes, just more and more snowflakes. And that's, that's not a knock on stitch on me at all. I like a lot of her designs. Um, I'm interested to see how her um, Homely House Plants SAL is going to go and that starts in a week or two, I think. So, but regardless, I'm going to finish it because I mean, it's not that difficult. It needs to be finished. Um, at some point I will finish it. Maybe I will make it a goal in February to work on, to work on it at least once a week or something. I was going to say a snowflake a week or a snowflake a day, but I'm, I'm not going to keep up with that. So, and as you can see, I'm still doing this whole like weird parking thing. So the back looks hideous because of the parking. Ugh, okay, directions, there we go. So the back looks hideous, um, but you know, only I'm gonna see the back, it really doesn't matter. I don't know why I get focused on the back because nobody sees it, but I like it when the back looks interesting and this just looks sad to me. So, <laughs> me and my weirdness. So um, as I said, I worked on the, um, I worked on this design here. I don't know if I ever showed you what it's supposed to look like when it's finished. Let me take this out of the bag so you can actually see it. <clears throat> so this pattern is Busala County Cross Stitch. And it's a pretty large piece. Oh, I can't get this straight. There we go. There we go, sort of. Okay. So it's a sun and moon. It's got some other celestial motifs there, and it says, reach for the stars, inspire others, dream freely, seek truth. Um, and when I saw this ages and ages ago, it really made me think of a friend of mine uh, who, funnily enough, her name is also Rachel, but it's not Rachel Raycraft. It's a different Rachel. 
Uh, we call them Charlottesville Rachel and Ireland Rachel at this point. <laughs> Just for the distinction. But anyway, when I saw this, she's she's a very, like, the moon is kind of like one of those things that makes me think of her. I don't know if you, if, if any of you do this, but like I have, there are certain colors I associate with certain people. Again, I apologize. The cats are going crazy. They're tearing up the curtains. Anyway, there are certain colors I associate with certain people, certain images or imagery, certain feelings, that kind of thing. So Rachel, you know, Charlottesville, Rachel, I'm not going to call her Charlottesville Rachel. That's you don't need to know that. Anyway, <laughs> uh, but this Rachel, she's you know the um, I, when I think of her, I think of the moon, I think of blue, I think of the ocean. You know, just certain things that I associate with her. And uh, so when I saw this, especially with the reach for the stars and dream freely, it very much speaks to who she is. So I got this for her. It's supposed to be a pillow. So it says celestial, celestial picture pillow. I'll put this information here too, just in case. I don't know if you can still find this or not, but if you're, I'm gonna try to stop wiggling it so you can just stop the camera if you wanna read this. Um, Celestial Picture Pillow, 16 by 12, designed by Nancy Rossi, it looks like. Um, and it's on 14 count Ada um, because I had already started it and I'm not going to redo it at this point. It doesn't have enough colors to keep me super interested. So it's one of those that I'm going to finish it because I started it. Uh, damn well, we'll finish it. But, um, but yeah, I'm not going to, not going to redo it just to put it on pretty fabric. Um, at this point, I would much prefer to just pick a different pattern and put it on new fabric than to try to redo this at all. I put way too many hours in it. Anyway. Oh my gosh, the digressions today. Digressions. I guess it's because it's Saturday. It's first thing on a Saturday. The only thing I have done so far today is I went down to the bakery and I got myself um, a biscuit and some focaccia bread. If you follow me on Instagram and you saw the focaccia, oh my gosh. Yeah, anyway, so that's been my morning so far and also cats. Cats. So this is the progress that I made. I actually finished, um, not finished, but I did tons and tons of this pale yellow in the face and we've got all of the little arms on the sun, all the rays on the sun, and now I've started on the moon's face as well. So I actually made a lot of progress. Pretty happy with that. So hoping to continue that progress in February. Um, I think I'll set another goal for myself to do at least 120 stitches. Um, I feel like that's a nice safe goal um, because I don't like working on it. So making sure I get at least 120 stitches in. Probably what I should do is see what the stitch count is and then divide that up across the year and and um, you know, do a monthly stitch goal based on that. But that that requires a lot of counting and math and <laughs> I just don't want to do that. So um, at the moment we'll go for 120. If I can get 400 again this month, that'd be fantastic. Um, I did make some progress. Um, on my linen and threads um, SAL. I haven't made a lot of progress, but I did make some progress um, based on what you all saw in the last video. So still working on January. Let's see if I can get this up here. Okay. Arr. Pardon me. I make strange noises when I'm trying to make things work. Okay. Why are you not? Okay. <laughs> This should not be this difficult. It's not rocket science. Okay. 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 I got it. Yeah. So, er, okay. so as you can see, I filled in this one motif, um, and that's about where, where I've gotten. Um, and part of that is because I got to this sort of stopping point because this motif is completely finished somewhere. Okay. This hands. <laughs> One day I will figure out directions. Okay, so I got this motif completely finished and then I was trying to decide because there's a little motif, a small motif that goes here and a small motif that goes about here and then we've got the big butterfly and then we have a half circle thing that's pretty large right there. And so before I went on I was trying to decide am I going to do additional colors or am I just going to stick with this one color, this one color way throughout? What am I going to do? Um, having now seen the February pattern uh, which has this really awesome potted plant kind of motif in it. Um, I really think I'm going to go, I'm going to add at least one more colorway. Um, I just haven't decided what. I would love to do a rainbowy kind of thing, but I'm not sure if it'll go with the kind of vibe that I have so far. 
So I'm not really sure I'm still trying to figure that out. So that's part of the reason that I haven't worked on it any more than I have is because I got to this place where I'm like, oh no, I have to make a decision. <laughs> and that stalled me. So um, I don't know if y'all are like that, but I, you know, it's like, wait, let me overthink this. That's, that's exactly what that was. But I have made some progress. Um, we'll certainly, I'll keep plugging along at this one. This is a really big um, pattern. I would love to have it completely finished by the end of 2020, um, but I am not going to beat myself up beat myself up over it um, because I just enjoy working on it. It's really fun. I think it's because each motif is I'm just using one color, so it's so enjoyable because you just kind of stitch right along. It's really nice. It feels really good stitching it in hand too. Um, I think part of that is the Lugana. The Lugana is really nice. It's a nice heavy weighty fabric. Um, has a good feel to it when you're working on it. But it's also just really fun doing the sewing method with that kind of pattern. So I just enjoy working on it. So I'll keep on regardless of what the timeline looks like. Um, and so next we have Aurora. Aurora is much closer to being done but she's still not finished. Um, Okay. Um, so here's Aurora. Come on now. Okay. Here's Aurora. So she has a beak now. She looks like a penguin. I have most of her little sweater in there. She's got her scarf and I've got the mittens started down there. Um, I did uh, have to frog some more only because I had not completely frogged from the mistake I made um, that I mentioned last time. So um, all this all the green on this side is new. All of that was fine, but this kind of lavender on the opposite top corner, I'm gonna point with my ring finger here. Um, all that lavender had to be pulled out and there had been some gray and black and some other stitches in there. I had to pull those out because they were, um, they were off pattern because of that mistake I had made earlier. So I fixed that. I think I got, I got at least 300 stitches in on Aurora this month. Um, no, I got way more than that because I started her in January. I got 300 stitches in since our last video. That's what it was. Uh, same with um, same with the Sun and the Celestial pattern. Um, I got 400 stitches in since I last talked to you all. So um, I've actually done a hell of a lot of stitching in the last week and a half. Thank you, School of Magical Stitches. Um, by the way, if you're in School of Magical Stitches, I am in the Beach Club Resort. So if you are also in the Beach Club Resort, you know, hit me up or something. You know, we'll, uh, I know that some of you may have actually come from there because our, our manager just recently did a, you know, throw up your Insta Instagram, throw up your YouTube. So if you have come over from School of Magical Stitches, welcome, happy to see you. Uh, hoping to check out your floss tube soon. Um, if you're here and you have a floss tube, you know, hit me up with a link. Um, might be an easier way than me checking the, uh, checking the group page. <laughs> um, let's see. So this is, you'll notice there's no progress on this. <laughs> this is Peppermint Purple's um, Year of Black Work. Uh, and I just, I have not had a chance. Um, part of it is with the School of Magical Stitches, since that's been my focus, um, that's all, since it's all stitch based, these only count as half stitches. Um, and because I felt like I was kind of running out of time in January and stuff, I was focusing on full stitches and getting in, you know, this and that assignment. <clears throat> so I haven't worked on that. Hoping to catch up maybe, maybe this weekend. Um, that would be kind of cool. Um, I had planned on tomorrow being just a relaxing stitchy day. And then my husband told me that we have plans with friends. So I'll be spending most of my day having plans with friends, which is not a bad thing, but you know how, you know the stitch life. You know, I didn't choose the stitch life, the stitch life chose me. <laughs> and even though I love being out with my friends and stuff, sometimes I, I really just want to be home stitching. So anyway, um, last but not least, uh, this is a new start. Yeah, this is a new start since um, since we last spoke. And, uh, but this is one that you knew was coming. This is the Grimm's Fairy Tale. So this is by Clouds Factory. This is on 18 count Ada from Mystic Fabrics. For some reason, every time I photograph this or film this or anything, it comes off really blue, kind of a slate blue. And it is actually green. <laughs> this is more of like a turquoisey, um, like a, a bluish green. It's not, it's not blue. Uh, it's much more green. Um, I love the color and I realized I love even more this 18 count because um, I don't know if you can see it very well. 
Um, the camera doesn't focus on its own very much. Um, but I actually love the puffiness of the stitches. And this is this is something super interesting. So a couple of my floss tube friends, um, you know, who may also be your friends, Rachel Raycraft and um, Heike at Stone Cold Coffee Stone Cold Coffee Crafts have both said that they hate 18 count Ada because of how puffy it is, of how doing two stitches over one on 18 count Ada makes it super thick and it's like way more coverage than they want and um, and stuff like that. And I'm like the exact opposite because I love that it's puffy. I love that it's three dimensional. I love how much coverage there is with two strands. <laughs> so it's, it's just so funny to me because I am like, I am so digging this pattern. I was really, when I first saw it, when I saw the first clue, I wasn't sure that I was gonna like it a whole lot. I was like, I don't know. I mean, I love, um, I love the, what is it, it's the Travelers of Bremen, the Musicians of Bremen. I love the story, have always loved the story. Um, and so, but the pattern itself, I was like, I don't know if I like that artwork, I don't know. I'm just not sure about this. I started stitching it and it is the most fun thing ever. It is so enjoyable to stitch. Like I thought Aurora was gonna be fantastic to stitch and she's so complicated and so frustrating, but these guys are just like, yeah, let's chill, it's all good. So yeah, um, I did, um, I, I'm not usually one to modify patterns. Um, I don't know if you follow Rolodex stitches, uh, but Carla loves to modify. And I think so does Michelle Bendy Stitchy. Um, you know, that's just kind of one of their things. They'll switch colors out and they'll, they'll change things to suit them. I don't normally do that. I normally just stitch whatever I'm given. But this time, this little cat in the, the given pattern is gray. And I was like, I don't, I don't want a gray cat. I don't have a gray cat. And I thought about making it sort of a, a tabby or a buff colored cat, but you've got the brown dog here and you got the brown rooster up here. So I was like, hmm, let's make it black. I have two black cats, so that'll work. So I've made the cat black. Probably gonna make the eyes green um, because there is so much brown slash orange. So I don't wanna put orange eyes in there, but, um, but my Loki baby has green eyes, so I'll put green in there. So I'm super excited. This has been really, really fun. Um, I've actually gotten over 400 stitches on this, if you can believe it. So not normally one to quantify stitches, but now that I'm counting them, I'm like, look how many stitches. So anyway, so that is the end of the whips. Um, that's a lot of whips. Um, though if you follow Quirks and Stitches, Janet Quirks and Stitches, um, this ain't nothing. She had so many, this is a funny thing. So if you follow 24 Hours of Cross Stitch, she, what her goal was, was to work on a different project every hour. She was gonna go through the alphabet with her whips and um, so she had 26 whips and if I understand they were actually it wasn't like she'd use one whip to to cover multiple letters I think it was an individual whip for each letter wow I'm having trouble keeping track of what I've got now especially trying to keep a track of magical stitches along with the whips that I'm doing and the whips that I want to do because um, Homely Houseplants is coming, and I haven't started the Woodland SAL from, um, whoa, words, Lakeside Needlecraft. I haven't started that yet, and um, I haven't started the Secret Project yet. I still need to get a couple more um, supplies for that. I have all the regular DMC floss, but there's some specialty floss I need to get for it. Um, so I haven't started those two things, and then I just, because of, thank you, Michelle Bendy Stitchy, um, because of uh, Vendy Stitchy, I have now fallen in love with some Lizzie Kate and some uh, um, Plum Street. Is it Plum Street samplers? Yeah, I've fallen in love with some of those designs that I'm going to have to add to the to the to be stitched list. This is Momo. <laughs> Hi, Momo. What you doing? Silly. Okay. So Momo's. Oh, there she goes. She's going to say hi. She has a little bit of an eye thing. Um, she's got some kind of allergy. It comes and goes. Anyway, <clears throat> so uh, those are some things that'll be added to the stack of projects Jesse wants to do this year. Um, 
so yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on, um, but this is not even close to as many whips as I know some people have. So, <laughs> but it's a lot of whips for me. I've always been one of those people like work on one thing, finish one thing, move on to the next. And I'm starting to realize that that may be part of the reason that I didn't finish as many projects as I would have liked to is because I think it really helps sort of energize you if you open yourself up to start something new and then go back to the old thing. Um, you know, so that's working pretty well for me so far. Um, I haven't finished anything yet, but it's only January or it's only February. Today is the first day of February. So, okay. So that's all the whips. That's all the things I'm working on. Um, I think Grimm's was the only new start since we last talked. So, um, there will hopefully be, I shouldn't say hopefully, there will probably be at least one new start, um, sometime in February. Should be at least one new start. <laughs> we'll see. I'm kind of discombobulated on my future plans. Usually I have everything very well laid out in my head and today I'm just kind of like, ah, whatever. Uh, cats. Uh, <laughs> so let's talk about some of the things that I purchased. Let's do a stash flash. So um, I mentioned a couple times about this super secret order that um, that I wasn't going to talk about because I was so excited and I wanted to wait um, for you all to see it and all that sort of stuff. Well, I finally, 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 finally got my order. It had to come from the UK. And I don't know if any of y'all are familiar, uh, but I have wanted some of these products for a while. Um, Karina at Bags Plus makes these awesome. Let me do an empty one first because I've already filled up some of these. <laughs> she does these really awesome little holders for, uh, and this is a Flip Buddy. This is a 12 pocket Flip Buddy floss buddy. So she calls these floss buddies. She does all different sizes. Um, and like I said, this is a 12 pocket. So you've got three, three, or four, sorry, I can count. So um, three columns of four, you shove your little floss down in there, and then they come in all these different fabrics. So this is going to be, this particular one is for my Woodland SAL, once I get it started. Super cute. And then I also got this, um, and I think I had decided what I was going to use this for, now I've forgotten again. Uh, I knew until I went to say something about it. Okay. Well, regardless, it's super cute. Um, I actually got five of these because <laughs> I was like, if I'm going to buy one, it's going to cost me more than the floss buddy cost in shipping. So I might as well buy all of them, right? Why not? Uh, <laughs> so I bought five of these and I'm so excited and they're so awesome. So this one, this is the secret project. I don't know if you can see, I have my and it's got a clear pocket on the front too, so you can put your scissors, you can put whatever little bits need to go with that project. I love this fabric. And this is what was so awesome. So I had been I had been stalking the Etsy store. Um, I'll put a link in the description. I'd been stalking Karina's Etsy store. And so I had picked out this fabric and a couple of the others. And I was like, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna wait till payday. I'm gonna wait till payday. I'm gonna be good. I'm gonna wait till payday. And then on payday, the all the fabrics that I wanted were gone. All the pieces that I wanted were gone. Because <laughs> they magically were all disappeared from the store. Hello, Momo. You're just gonna be all in the video today, huh? Um, and um, so I messaged her kind of to ask her, you know, when might you have more? Um, you know, so that I could plan for the future and all that sort of stuff. And she's like, actually, I still have them in hand. I was getting ready to send them out to Michelle. Um, but you know, what fabrics are you interested in? And so I sent her a picture of all the ones I want and she's like, I still have all of those. And I was like, oh, yes, 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 yes. Please send them, send them all to me. So <laughs> it was fantastic customer service. She answered so fast and she's been awesome during the process too, because, um, in the midst of her shipping, we went on vacation to San Antonio. I had the mail held, um, and we've had a problem in the past where they've held a package and not remembered to give it to us when they released the mail. Um, and I didn't have tracking on it at first. So I was like, I was a little afraid that it was stuck at our local post office and I wasn't going to be able to retrieve it. So I messaged her to ask her about it and she had the tracking. She knew exactly where it was um, and I followed it from there. So Karina's awesome to deal with. I highly recommend her just as a seller, period, but her products are fantastic too. So I love this fabric. This fabric is so awesome. And now that I have these and I'm like, oh, I, you know, 12, should, 12 pockets should be plenty for any project that I do. Ha <laughs> ha. Most of my projects, I think, take 20. 20, 20, 25 colors, something like that. So um, I'm probably at some point in the future going to be buying some larger ones. Um, I'm going to have to wait a little while. I already blew my budget and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but this is the secret project. That's the secret project that I'm 
working on in conjunction with um, Rachel Ray and uh, Stone Cold Coffee Crafts. So that's that's the DMC floss for that. How pretty are those colors? Not as pretty as they could be because my camera doesn't pick up the color well. But anyway, um, and this one, isn't that cute? This is my anim animal almanac. Animal, animal almanac. Okay, animal almanac. So as represented by the little zoo animals. Hello, Momo. And Mom, yeah, Momo's gonna be all on the camera today. So that's the animal almanac colors. I haven't been completely winding these up. Um, I'm just winding up the the bits that I've cut off to use, which is why I have this like whole bag situation in here. So um, this is the bag that the that my whole kit came in, and I'm one of those people I kind of like to keep things in their original packaging. So that's kind of what I'm doing with that. That's an animal almanac. I don't know why I'm having so many problems with that this morning. And this one, look how cute. Look how cute. It's like little like little sneaky cats. It's so cute. I love the one that's got the, um, he's got the mask on. He's so funny. So, and this is, um, this is for my Grimm's Fairy Tales. So, um, these are only, these are the colors I've used so far. So I'm kind of winding as I go. And I've gotten smart and started actually putting the, uh, the symbols directly on the, uh, the bobbins now. Because I hate having to go back to that one page and figure out what the hell color I'm supposed to be working with. So, but these are so fun. So check out Bags Plus. Um, these are actually really affordably priced. It's just because shipping is shipping. Um, that's the only reason that it, it gets a little bit expensive. But honestly, if you save up your money and you buy a couple at one time, then you save on the shipping too. And why not have more floss buddies? Uh, she also makes... Um, project bags, uh, full on project bags. She makes really large floss buddies. Um, I've seen 20, 25, 40, 45, and like a hundred and something. And if I remember correctly, Michelle Bendy Stitchy actually has a full DMC gigantic floss buddy. And I believe that's from Bags Plus. So Karina's awesome. Her products are awesome. Definitely check her out. Fantastic. Super excited. I've been so excited for like forever about that because I wanted one so badly to the point where I was like asking people if they knew who in the US might make something similar. Uh, but I really wanted hers specifically. And one of the reasons that I wanted Karina's were because I could tell on the pictures they have hers have such crisp lines. They're really like nicely sewn. Um, heavy duty and I love the fact this is a little tiny detail I love the fact not everybody does this but she actually folds over the vinyl and sews it down so that you have this nice um, smooth lip and she does that on these pockets as well so and that's a little detail that I don't see with all of the with uh, all the folks that are doing either vinyl cover project bags or similar um, floss holders and stuff like that so really good attention to detail really nice fabric choices check her out i promise she didn't pay me for this <laughs> uh let's see the other thing i got um i haven't gotten a lot of stash um because i spent most of my i spent all of my january budget um between two different things um and that was the floss buddies that was a good portion and then the other portion was for um some hand dyed floss from why does her name escape me every time? Kathy Davidson at Dying for Cross Stitch on Facebook. So I'm gonna hold that one piece to last because it's my favorite. But I bought these four colorways because I thought they would uh, complement what I was doing with the um, linen and thread. Uh, I'm not sure that they'll work for that, but they're still fantastic anyway. So, oh, this is coming off really teal in the camera. That's interesting. But it's, uh. The true to life colors are more green as usual, um, but it's got this sort of like burnt yellow um, into green, into brown. There's a little bit of, I love the fact that it's teal on the camera. I wish it were kind of teal in person, but, um, but it looks teal and black. It's actually it's sort of green and brown, um, but it's still really gorgeous. And this is a nice gigantic hank. I want to say that this is Oh, I can't remember how many yards is this. It's a whole lot of yards. Um, it's much more than your your standard skein of uh, DMC floss. Um, she sometimes sells really big ones like this. She sometimes, a lot of times, she sells the smaller ones. Um, these are about ten bucks each plus shipping. Um, 
And this is really cool. So this is yellows and oranges. Maybe I need to adjust my color balance on the screen. So we've got this sort of golden yellow at the top, like an antique yellow almost, into purples and reds and oranges, and then a um, light blue at the bottom. That's really nice. It's kind of roostery colors to me. I don't know why it screams rooster to me. Something about the red, I guess. And then there's this one, which is some really nice muted colors. So it's green at the top, and it's much more yellow uh, in person. It's got yellow, more yellow throughout. So it's a yellower year, green, yeah, more yellow green. Um, and then goes into this kind of peach color and then gray at the bottom. Really nice muted colorway. And then this is my favorite. This one is fantastic. I hope it comes off on camera because it is so freaking awesome in person. So this is, oh wow, it doesn't look, <laughs> the camera does not do this justice because this blue, this is like an electric blue. It's fantastic. So this is um, sort of a red purple at the top, um, goes into this fantastic intense, um, it's much more of a magenta intense pink, almost an electric magenta there versus red. It's kind of coming red on the camera. And then this is that electric blue into a mixture of the purple again at the end. This one is my favorite. I have to find something special for this. I've thought about working this into the Linen Threads SAL, but I'm not really sure. I feel like this is going to clash um, or be too intense with that um, Indian tapestry I'm already using. So we'll see how that goes. So that was um, that, and I bought some floss, and what else did I buy last month? I bought something else. It's not, it's, my memory is not popping. Anyway, but that was my, that was my budget for last month, so, um, and it took most of the month to get it all in, which is totally fine. Um, it's all good. Um, this month I will have coming, um, my Misty Fabric of the Month. Uh, so we're back into her running her Fabric of the Month. Uh, in fact, I already have my shipment notification, so that'll be on the next video. Um, I'm anxious to see what color she's picked for February or January. I guess it's whatever month she considers this. I'm curious to see what color she's going to do. I'm really excited about that. Um, I also have um, some more Kathy flosses on order. Um, I haven't paid for them yet because the way she does hers, um, you can... Um, you can choose items one week and you can wait until the next time she posts items uh, before you pay so that you can get it all shipped at one time and save on shipping. So she, she allows like 10 days for payment so that you can combine um, uh, items. So, um, and this time she's not posting this weekend, she's posting next weekend. So she has said that, um, that you can actually hold your order from last week until February 9th um, and order that all at one time. So uh, waiting on the next um, the next round of things, sorry, my head is itchy today. Um, waiting on her next round of postings before I decide, uh, or not decide, but before I go ahead and pay that invoice so that she can kind of group that all together. So I will have some more Kathy floss from Dying for Cross Stitch. And, um, I'm super excited because I'm going to have several pieces, hopefully before my next video, I should have several pieces from Be Stitch Me. Um, and her fabrics, I've been following her for a couple of weeks. Her fabrics look fantastic. And I have been super lucky. Um, she does these giveaways every, I don't know if she does it every time, but she's done it the last couple of weeks. And I have actually won two pieces of fabric from her. So I'm super excited. I'm getting a piece of 40 count, what is the color? Granite, 40 count granite. And I'm getting a piece of 18 count sandstorm. So those will be nice, uh, really nice neutrals, words really nice neutrals. And then this week, um, I actually got some fabric in her Friday night fight night, um, two pieces of, I believe what she calls sorbet, which is this gorgeous light orange into pink, um, brilliant color. Um, and I ended up with an 18 count piece and a 32 Lagana, I think in that. And then I also me pleased a piece of 18 count something. There was something else that was 10 bucks. <laughs> so I'll have those fabrics in. Um, and that's, that's most of my budget. <laughs> Cause 
because I got greedy with the me please um, or at least that's like that's like half my budget and then um, but the thing that really blew my budget already and today is February 1st so even before February 1st um, I placed my first orders with first order with silks for you so I have three I believe three hanks of silks for you coming from Australia super excited two of them are very similar colorways but they're different shades um, and then I think I got a third that's um, that is that you may have actually seen um, on the linen and threads page somebody is using this colorway it's a really brilliant rainbowy kind of colorway so um, those will be coming in whatever time it takes to ship from Australia. So <laughs> maybe for next floss tube, maybe not. So those are the things that are coming and uh, and then that'll be probably most of it because there's no budget left. <laughs> Unless I decide to treat myself. Um, I did have a really nice surprise at work. Uh, right after I got back from San Antonio, I got a promotion uh, and that came with a bit of a raise. So I might, I might justify a slightly larger purchase by rewarding myself um, because I was already planning on putting in an order at uh, 123 stitch to get some uh, Plum Street uh, samplers patterns and Lizzie Kate patterns so we'll see um, but we'll talk about that more next time so uh, the other thing I have gotten since we talked was I've joined Knit Crate I don't know if any of you are um, crocheters or knitters um, but I sometimes dabble in the yarn crafts as well. Um, not as much lately because cross stitch is so much more satisfying, but I still, I still love my pretty yarns. So I got this knit crate thanks to Rachel Ray and, um, I love the way they package it. So it comes in this really pretty blue box, you get your knit crate box and they, um, they package it like very, um, intentionally it's very nice so they put it in this tissue paper and I think you get like a special little extra gift every month I'm not really sure um, this month apparently it was this tiny knit cap <laughs> how cute is that it's like a it's like a tiny hat for your finger <laughs> okay um, but yeah so they gave me a tiny hat but the more fabulous thing is this yarn oh my gosh I don't know if you can see this. The colors are not going to come off right. The I think it's because it's such a cloudy day today. But these colors are fantastic. If you can't tell, check out um, check out my Instagram. I did post these when I got them. So there's this awesome blue, variegated blue color. And then there's this like purple and gray and blue. You can't see the purple so well in this light. But trust me, it's got some really gorgeous purple. I liked these so much I actually went and purchased an extra skein of each uh, from Knit Crate that I just got last night and uh, so I wanted to make sure that I had enough of both of those to do something big if I wanted to do something big so that's fantastic um, and they actually they gave me a link um, so that if anybody else wants to try Knit Crate you can try it for just five dollars and trust me it's worth it this whole box was five dollars so even if you only get the first box and you don't want anything else from Knit Crate, it's a fantastic value. These, um, I believe, retail at like $25 a piece. So why not get you some, some yarn for five bucks? Because that includes shipping, $5 total. So check that out. The link will be in my description. Um, and yeah, so that's it for stuff. So the only thing left because uh, I kind of already talked about stuff that's coming up. The only thing left um, is to say thank you uh, for for being here, for watching my videos, for joining me on this crazy little journey, for being there for my lives, uh, for hitting that subscribe button and sticking around and watching. So let me just close this up and get some things out of the way. So, um, and actually this first thing is less of a thank you and more of a um, uh, pass the stash. Um, if you watch, uh, words, if you watch Carla at Rolodex Stitches, um, she did something recently that was a past the stash kind of thing. And so I'm going to do that with this. I have this, if you watched my, my, um, uh, Berry Treasure video, um, you saw this. This is a whip I started ages ago. Um, it's a wolf with another wolf in the background. And I still have this full kit. So this is... We have the, you can see the, that's not the full pattern. You can see that the pattern page is still in there, all the flosses, the fabric. Um, it even has this hoop 
that is um, that it's already on and a needle so I mean it's the entire kit um, but I have decided I, I no longer wish to stitch this um, you can see I didn't do a whole lot to start with probably needs a little bit of an ironing might need a bit of a washing it's been in the garage for a while um, but I've decided I don't want to stitch it anymore um, and I would like to send it on to somebody who would like to stitch it so um, let's do this none of these are giveaways these are gifts um, I'm just trying to decide who to give the gift to so um, no purchase no money involved nothing whatsoever um, I'm just gonna pick folks and send these out um, so this if you're interested in receiving this um, I would like you to please in the comments say I'd like to stitch the stash so stitch the stash to get the the forever wild wolf so if this is something you're interested in having I will ship it just like it is I mean, I'll put it in a bag, obviously, but uh, um, it's got all the pieces and parts, everything you should need to finish this up. So stitch the stash if you're interested in having that. Um, as further thank yous, also from that crazy stash that you saw, um, I am giving away this. This is Frederick the Literate. Let me get my hand off them. Frederick the Literate. Um, it's a pretty large piece. It's 12, well, it's not, it's reasonably large 12 by 11 finished um, and this has this is the full kit it's got all the threads the black ada um, and it is 14 count black ada also comes with a thread palette so that I would like to give to a new home uh, somebody who would like to stitch this so if you would like to stitch this say I would like to stitch the cat in your comment I would like to stitch the cat and then I also um, am going to give this away or de-stash, pay forward, pass the stash to, um, so this is a count across stitch, two hearts, one love. You could certainly skip that wording and put whatever you want to in it. I think it's a fantastic little um, basket weave design in the background and these flowers are gorgeous the lilies and everything so even if you didn't use this as a marriage thing i think it would be really pretty stitched up you could even do something subversive like you know um women belong wherever decisions are made or you know f you or <laughs> whatever you want to put in there um i love seeing the things that are like these intricate beautiful flowers and then it says something raunchy in the center so <laughs> i think that would be fun to do so this is actually love wedding record uh seven by five it's designed by todd trainer um comes on 18 count avery with the needle instructions and alphabet and numbers um, and if you would like to stitch this, um, I would, let's say, I would like to stitch wedding record. So I'll look for wedding. I would like to stitch wedding record. So those are for my stitchy friends. Now, if you're here from, from diamond painting, I have something for you too. So, um, or even if you're a stitcher and you also like diamond painting, or if you've ever been interested in diamond painting and just didn't want to spend the money, um, this is something I would like to give to you all as a thank you, um, or give to one of you as a thank you. So this is a diamond art club. <laughs> I'm trying to be secretive. So this is a diamond art club. Um, I think it's an older release, but um, it is still in its shrink wrap brand new mint and package um this is friends from the sea friends from the seas i think this is still available as a larger piece um but they've named it slightly different it is a round with a b and it is 32 by 42 so it's not massive but it's not teeny tiny rachel ray might call this a snack but it's still not it's not teeny tiny um, so I would like to give that to somebody who is interested in a diamond painting. So if you were like this, um, if you would like this, um, let's say, um, uh, I'd like to paint the C's. Make sure you say C's, S-E-A-S, C's. Okay. So, uh, those things, de-stashing, gifting, thank yous, all that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah. So put your stuff in the comments. Um, I will probably post a new video, a new floss tube in about two weeks. Um, so let's say you have that amount of time to get your comments in. And then before I um, get the video together, I will pick those names and, uh, and I'll let you know who needs to contact me to give me some shipping address.
information. Words. So anyway, thank you all so much for being here. I know this was kind of long and rambly, but I appreciate you. Um, I appreciate each and every one of you. I thank you so much for being here and I hope to see you next time. Have a great one.